Wiley talked about her childhood, her memories of the Second World War, and her research into drawing at the Royal College of Art. As with every artist, all of life's experiences, personal, academic, or collectively received media, can be mined for material to further the creative flow. Did you have a creative family? Were your parents creative? Um, my mother played the piano and she played it rather well. She wasn't a professional. Um, and she was good at language. She spoke French. Your um, mother did? Well. Yes, yeah. she, was, she, she was good at that sort of stuff, but she didn't draw anything. My father, he, he did, um, I suppose engineering was his thing, but he worked in India and he was on. Um, he was the director of ordnance for the whole of India, which was kind of a big military job. A director of ordnance? Mm. It was the wartime, when I was, in, I'm thinking of the Second World War and before. So all that kind of stuff, like munitions that was <coughs> being built in India as a Commonwealth country. He was, he was director for work, but he was a civilian, so he wasn't, he didn't have an army rank and he wasn't in the army. I was with my mother because I was the youngest of seven. Right. So I've got, I had six older brothers and sisters. So I, I was a ch small child with my mother and she picked up the t my brothers at school in England because they were boarding in England. My, my mother thought it was a good idea of children, girls, had something that they could do so that if they were betrayed by their husbands or if their husbands died or if they, you know, one thing or another, they had a, 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 a get out, which wasn't meaning or anything. It was, you know, okay, so they all learnt languages. So she thought she would have, so they, my sisters, were, there's a lot of their school, one in, in, in France, Italy or Germany. But in 1930, eight or nine probably, she collected them up and went back to England for, the, for the, my brothers and then war broke out and no boats were allowed to go back to India, we were stopped. So my mother and her children stayed in England throughout the, the Second World War and my father was in India. So, Do you remember that time at all? I remember the war very well, and I can remember slightly, India slightly, because I left when I was probably about four, three, four or something. So I can, I, I can remember the war very, very well. You came back by boat? Mm. Do you remember that? Not really. I do remember seeing Stromboli. Seeing what? Stromboli, which was a volcano. I often do volcanoes, funny enough, there's no connection. Can we go back to really, you yes, go remembering back. the war? What do you remember, remember of the war. war? Were you in Kent during the war? Uh, at the beginning of the war, we stayed. My mother decided, we lived in Hyde, and she decided that that was not a good place because there was a threat of invasion. This is all very historically, um, is it boring? It no, I don't, boring. well... Uh, go uh, through it quickly. Uh, she went, she pulled out of the coast. You can always cut it all out, you know, and she stayed in Bayswater because I had a she had an aunt there. Uh, so, the beginning, the very beginning of the war, I was living in Bayswater, which was very in London. Yes, a great deal of bombing going on, cat fights, and then she thought, well, this isn't a very good idea. So she moved out of London, and we got stuck because you couldn't go, the Home Guard said you can't go any further, you know, you're staying here, roads are barricaded, so we stayed where we were, and that was Farnborough Park. Where was it? Farnborough Park. Farnborough Bromley. Right. So I spent the rest of the war there. And I've done a lot of doodlebug paintings, and um, paintings of high explosives, and I've done paintings which um, remember the war. And your mother in encouraged you to go to art college, or...? She thought it was a good thing to have something that you could do, as I've mentioned with the others. Yes. And, and um, she thought law would be good. Oh, what did you think? Um, I've never had a good memory. So law isn't very good, since you should remember all the, you know, minutiae kind of details of stuff. So I don't like performance, I don't like, um, I can't remember, but I find it tiresome to learn parts for the, you know, for the play or something. 
Well, this takes me a long time. Mm. So I said, I thought painting was a good idea. <coughs> and she said, oh, well, yes, OK. She was not so in favour, but she thought it was OK to do painting, you know, colours. And in your parents' home, did they have paintings on the walls? They had a or? few Victorian paintings. They liked very, very, very ordinary paintings. They did not like what I did. Um, and they didn't care for long art at all. Right. So it was quite a quite a dry uh, in terms of uh, encouragement. Yeah. They simply thought that it was nice that I was doing something and sticking at it. As I did, I, mean, I was per perfectly happy. I liked it. Do you I remember any of your teachers at at, uh, at co the first college you went to? Do you remember uh, any of your teachers? Well, I remember that. Yes, very well. And yes, extremely well. Were they helpful or encouraging? Or? Well, it was Mr. Hennessy who was crazy about Matisse, but in general they rather was perhaps a tiny bit suspicious of Matisse. I think they may have found he was a bit flighty or a bit fashionable or a bit, because Matisse was still well alive when I was at the art school. So was Picasso. Um, well, I think he died in 54. I'm not sure when Matisse died. Picasso went on for a very long time. Or if he if if he if he were just dead, it was only just. So he was very modern for, for a lot of the tutors who preferred Sickert. Sickert. So it was Sickert and uh, Euston Road, and they were all from the Royal College. The tutors were they, um, except for one who was from the Slade. Except for one who was from the Slade. That was Mr. Evely. They all had Mr. And the girls were called by their Christian names, but the boys were called by their surnames. Were there any women that taught you? There were women, but they taught fashion and they taught textiles. Oh. Dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that that was the case. It certainly was the case. And the painting tutor said to me, I don't know why I'm spending time with you. You'll just get married and have babies, said with a great deal of venom, and that'll be that. I did get married. I did have children. but. I returned. And then it was when you very left. very condescending of him. Uh, it was very male driven. Right. All artists were male. You know, it was. Actually, it just makes you stick at it more. So you left college and you had children. And uh, how did you meet your husband? Well, before I was married, I went. I did a uh, postgraduate course at Goldsmiths. And he was on it. Was in painting, it. or it was no, it was not. It wasn't painting. It was painting students. But what does that mean? We were told that if you taught anywhere, a school, you would not get as much money as someone who taught English or maths or French or anything else. So if you did a, a postgraduate thing, you would get the same. So if you felt that you were going to paint, but you would need support since painting was, it was very difficult then to live off your painting because painters were old and established, but the younger ones it was very difficult. So it seemed, it seemed a good thing to do since it would be irritating and would make you ratty if you were teaching somewhere and getting much less than somebody else because, simply because they would have done English. Anyway, so that so it was geared to just general education. We all had to do everything. We had to do a bit of bookbinding and a bit of. And did you mean and, that's where you met your husband? Yes. He was doing the same thing. He'd done painting, and he thought lots of us thought it was probably a good idea. We were encouraged to do that. Do you remember any of the other students? Mm -hmm. Who? Anybody that you've known and still? And yes. There are some who one became a godmother to a child, um, another one. Yes, I do remember them. And are, are any of them still painters? Um, the godmother does book production and uh, that sort of thing. She doesn't paint you know, just by itself. Mm. Um, and I, not really. I, I, really, I don't know. And did you use that qualification to teach with? Do I didn't teach. You don't? I so had children. OK. <laughs> I did later. Mm. I, later, I did, after I left the Royal College, I did some teaching um, 
part, very part-time teaching at a college of further education. Mm. So, so you, then you had children, and you spent your time. In, did, were you living here too in Kent? I had or? children here and lived here, and it was from here and much later that I went to the World College. So when you went there to, to research drawing, was there anybody else doing that? No. It was you. Mm. And what did you find? Well, it was, it was interesting. I, I talked to people, tutors. Um, In different students, departments? Yes, students. That's wonderful. So you floated. I, I floated. I talked to students. I went to all the major art schools. I made appointments to meet staff. I, got photographs of their work, the student work. Um, I drew myself. It was it was historically quite interesting. Did you write and a thesis? I did a long thesis, yes. And um, really, it's quite interesting because I talked to the students and said, well, who was your sort of major influence? Who was, uh, these were the tutors too. And the answers that I got were the focus was some people said Leonardo was the great big thing about. Others said Ruskin. Others said Sickert. Others said Bomberg. They were the, they kept coming up, so I used With those, those four for my for my thesis, which I did. And you had to do a, um, a written thesis as well. Did you find out anything in, uh, that surprised you? Um, I find I find Bomberg's writing very interesting, but Matisse and Bomberg had a, a parallel, they were somewhat parallel mm -hmm. in what they said, but um, I thought Matisse was better, which sounds like a betrayal, but it's not. I just thought Matisse was better, because Bomberg, what he said was good, but his paintings weren't quite like what he said, if you understand the difference. You know, yes, you I do. You can have a theory and you can propound it, but in fact, in practice, you, do, you don't always do exactly uh, what you think and write down is key. So that Matisse was nearer in his work to what he said, and Bomberg was near in his work to what he said, to what Bomberg said. Right. Which, I mean, I don't... You might find that this is... I don't like pitching one artist against another. No. But they said much the same. Eastern Bombach said very parallel kinds of things. Were you asked to pitch one artist no. against another in your thesis, or were you asked to make no. an argument, as I some people... I was asked to do anything. OK. <laughs> it was something the student... And remember, I was older than quite a few, so there was quite a lot of experience. So, no, no, there wasn't. So I worked very by myself. That's why the, the names really haven't stuck, because I simply got on with what I was doing. And were you asked to make work about it too, make drawings about it? Didn't it didn't matter. Didn't matter. But did you? It didn't seem to matter. I did draw. Didn't you did draw. Matter. It didn't seem to come into it very much. At the end of I've the... I've always drawn a, a lot, lot, because the painting that I make usually comes from a drawing. I mean, I've got tons of drawings, literally. There's that cupboard and that cupboard. I really have a huge amount of drawings. They are key for me because they're the beginning. And then I sift and go on, go, and then the drawing and the painting becomes, they are very important. From my point of view, the drawings are key. Mm. That's always, I've always found it rather peculiar that drawings are cheaper than paintings. Actually, they should be more, in a way. The drawing is absolutely vital, because that is where you come to a great deal of what it is that you... And then you make that into a painting. Don't ask me why then you do the painting, but the painting is coloured, and I like coloured, and the painting is big, and I like big. So it's very reasonable for me to take it and make go along with it. Also, it changes as it goes along. Do you think that your... Since a brush and paint isn't the same as a little coloured pencil. Yeah. They change. But sometimes they don't change much. 
Do you think your way of thinking and uh, making change through doing the, your research at the Royal College, do you think that, that influenced you? I think I've always been much the same. But my husband used to say, I don't be so stupid, you know, everyone you know, moves. You know, of course you move, but I've always been rather much the same. Mm. Which I've come to think is rather good. It's rather nice that people have a fundamental thing that they are and then stuff goes on, but they remain very much what they are, rather than kind of whiffling about and sort of about jumping on one thing. And, uh, anyway. When did you start making paintings and drawings about films? Quite a long time ago, but not so many. I have done work from films, I think, 20 years ago or more, but not so much that one thought, well, this is the direction I'm doing, and then it came to me to know that, in fact, that I do do it, because they're such a good source of imagery. Mm. They, I do drawings, I do paintings from television as well, and newspapers and um, news items, anything, anything that comes up, which is now, which I think is quite nice. But then I also have gone to the Vienna and stuff and the British Museum and made studies of ancient stuff there because the Louvre, I don't know, it doesn't matter where it is because I draw wherever I go so I've made drawings and I could just as well use those but I like them to be contemporary I like to use Wayne Rooney I, I like subjects which everybody knows it's a, is that because it's a collective, shared information? Very much so. Also, people know that image and they can then see what you have done with it, how you've transformed it, what's happened. So it's like you're part of a conversation? Yes, it comes from... Yes, they, people know John Terry. So I substituted Solomon for John Terry simply because they're both rich. Um, they're both known of their time. Everyone knew Solomon that, in that area. Everyone sort of knows, well, a lot of people know John Terry. And he has got a smashing nose. Really is good. It's really kind of big and stuck on right mm. angles. It's, mm. There's nothing pert or twiddly or twitsy or shy about his nose. It's good nose. And I think it would be a very bad thing if any gender is... Um, what's positively discriminated against, and if it went the other way, it would be just as bad. I just think it shouldn't be there at all. The, the, it, the question of Rose Wiley, woman painter. That's right, mean. how do you find it, and, and can we talk about feminism? Because, well, of course I'm a feminist, because I think people should be equal, but I'm not militant. I'm, I'm militantly a painter, and I think it's, it's how it's the painting that counts, which isn't terribly fashionable. If you can see what I'm talking about. I can see what I you're talking about. I am a woman. Yes. But <laughs> I've, <laughs> and I've got children, you know, it's terrific. I can't, there they are. Um, but it's painting I'm interested in, not gender. And I don't paint. I met, a, I met a painter the other day and she said, oh, God, you're smashing, you paint like a bloke. And I said, what's well, that? No, what, is, what does that mean? What, does that what, mean? Did, what did she think? What, what, what did she mean, mean by it? I don't know. With confidence or I th do you think? It's interesting you're proving. I think she meant I didn't just paint flowers or tampax or something. Children or babies or I think, I think that's what she meant. But <laughs> take your pick. <laughs> Now that in the last five years you've had exhibitions in Washington, New York, Philadelphia, Moscow, Berlin, I actually Norway. ran out of paper trying to no. <laughs> write down all the, of the places that you've had. Norway. But with all these mm. exhibitions, do you find, uh, do you f does it come with a certain kind of pressure or no, responsibility? No. Good. I mean, so that's what's so good because I've 
if you're very young and this happens, you get stuck in what is... If something's bought by museums and stuff, that is what you are expected over and over. to do. Mm. And I think that's very bad. I think that doesn't help any artist. I haven't ever had that. And in fact, various people I've worked with, like the man from the lad from Moscow, he said, "There's no do what you paint, what you you know. There's no pressure." I think. I think that's also a nice thing about being older. They don't. Nobody bothers to put pressure of that type on you. Mm. So that's quite good. What are the the new things coming up in your in, in your life and your making painting? I have a show coming up at Douglas Hyde in Dublin, um, <clears throat> and possibly, and this is all very sensitive, so I won't go into it, but somewhere else. But you know, you get these things that are not yet formed, so you don't mention them because they. And and, and is that exciting? In in does that kind of spur you along, or you, you probably well, I don't need very, it? Very, I I like it, but I don't need it. No, no. because I'm so used to working without anybody accepting anything. I mean, really, paintings were just stacking up here so, such a lot and so much that the space was, the house was running out of space. Mm. And they were leaning against that wall, that wall, that wall, that wall, that mm. It was diff it was, and then suddenly they've all been taken and shipped and... It's a wonderful fascination to keep, keep on with. And it's also very it's exciting, the whole business. It's, first of all, it's exciting making paintings because they drive you balmy while you're doing them. And then you feel rather pleased when you've finished. I'm pleased about the one on the wall upstairs. I've been working on it. And I did a bit more this morning. I finished it this morning. So that's why I wanted to stick up there. That's why I, wanted to, I like to be with it. Yes. And after a bit, it, that all goes, you know, recedes and superseded by it. Okay. The new painting you're doing at the time. Well, we'll we'll leave you now, and you can go back. To <laughs> it. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Have I done what you want? I mean, I you've done, more than done. What I have you done want. my attitude no, you've just painting. More. What did you want to do more? Well, I don't know. I don't <laughs> like you, but I do have a very definite. Um, attitude, you do have definite attitudes about painting. Yes, and it is very very focused, but, very fascinated, but, very. But maybe it's come out in the talk. I don't like slick and I don't like clever and I don't like... I like cheap but not all cheap. I like avail avail availability, that's why I said I like to do pe things that people know about. I'm very picky. <laughs>